Every year around Halloween, we are treated to an outpouring of what could only be described as scare literature, telling us about how the holidays, satanic and evil, and should not be celebrated by Christians. These opinions are backed up by some rather unusual and very frightening fantasies masquerading as historical facts. The following videos are not intended to address whether or not Satan exists, nor to show that witches are nice cornola eating vegetarians and tree hookers who would harm a fly, nor is it a tackle of fundamentalist Christians, but rather a discussion concerning some of the so-called facts offered in some anti-Halloween publications. Now this is where we get into the trick. If you did not cooperate with the Druids, they would take blood from a dead um, body that they had actually been dragging around and paint the six-pointed star with the circle around it. This is known as a hexagram from the Latin hexer for six. This is the foulest, the most evil of all the symbols in the occult world. I don't care what anyone else tells you. Yeah, well, look, I've said this many times in the Bible Answer Man broadcast, words and phrases are not univocal, they're equivocal, they take on the meaning that the context allows them to have, and I think that same principle holds true with the Star of David. The Star of David is not something that you find in the Bible as an illustration you find in one of the margins. It's something that arose in the Middle Ages, and it was a symbol that is adopted by Judaism, and that symbol has the meaning that Judaism attaches to it. That meaning is hardly a cult in terms of its symbolism. Uh, now, if, if a Mormon uses it, and Mormonism has used it, Mormonism uses it in a different way. If Islam uses it, and Islam has used it, Islam uses it in a different way. The same thing with Eastern religions, the same thing with Hindu, Hinduism. Uh, so the symbol takes on the meaning that the culture allows the symbol to have. Uh, so I wouldn't uh, worry in any sense that this has a cult underpinnings. No, they are using this to highlight uh, David as Israel's quintessential king. Of course, we would take this to a whole different level as Christians and say not only was David Israel's quintessential king, but David was a type pointing forward to the one who forever sits upon the throne of David, and that one is Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe himself. Because Samhain fell on the night of October 31st, before All Hallows Day on November 1st, people started calling Samhain All Hallows Evening. The, the Gregorian calendar, also called the Western calendar and the Christian calendar, is internationally the most widely used civil calendar. It is named for Pope Gregory XIII, who introduced it in October 1582. There was no October 31st during the time of the Celts. At least our dating system. It was believed and taught by Druids that on October the 31st, the Lord of the Dead, their Samhain, called together all the wicked souls that had died within the past 12 months. These Our present calendar did not even exist during the time of Druids. So their decision on celebrating it was based on some futurist calendar date that did not exist at the time. This is rather hard to believe. Not to mention the Samhain festival was based on seasons not calendars. Samhain is a cross-quarter day, situated between the autumn equinox and winter solstice, which would correspond to anywhere from as early as November 5th to as late as November 8th. The timetable of Samhain for the years 2000 to 2020 indicates that it will be either on November 6th or 7th. Either way not October 31st. The Druids were the pagan priests of the early Celtic religion. Who were the Druids? 
Today the word conjures thoughts of magic, wizardry and spiritualism, but in ancient times the definition of druid was much broader. During the Iron Age, the druids made up the higher educated tier of Celtic society, including poets, doctors and spiritual leaders. The legacy of this last group is the most enduring and the most mysterious. Druids were people in ancient Britain and France, who served a wide variety of roles such as philosophers, teachers, judges, the repository of communal wisdoms about the natural world and the traditions of the people, and the mediators between humans and the gods, writes Barry Cunliffe in his book Druids, a very short introduction. He notes that, curiously, the ancient texts do not call them priests directly. They're most mentioned by name, they're in 30, 30 references in Greek and Roman writers between the 2nd century BC and the 4th century AD. They were barbaric, and they were dreaded for their power and their bloodthirstiness, okay? They were directly concerned with animal and human sacrifice, and that's out of a book called Man, Myth, and Magic by Richard Cavendish, okay? And their altars, this says, and indeed their altars streamed with blood of human victims, holocaust of women, men, women, and children enclosed in large towers of wicker work were sometimes sacrificed as burnt offerings to their superstition, which were, at that time, indeed to enhance the consideration of the priest, who were an ambitious race, delighting in blood. That was written by Lady Queensborough in the Occult Theocracy on page 102. So these, are, these references that were references, they're true. The Roman and Greek despised the Celts. The Celts were a threat to their way of life. Asking 30 plus some Roman Greeks about the Celts is like asking 30 plus some Democrats about Republicans.